Hey y'all, it's me Kimberly Clark and welcome to my 13th anti-haul video, AKA what I'm not gonna buy. What I'm not gonna buy. Ah. This is my 13th anti-haul video. I posted two videos today because I was like, I had so much stuff to anti-haul, but I also really wanted to do this anti-haul video because I asked if everybody wanted to see a brush anti-haul video where I exclusively anti-haul makeup brushes in my 11th anti-haul video. And so many of you were like, yes, yes, yes. Please talk about the makeup brushes that I don't need and I'm not gonna buy and ask and you shall receive. I thought this video was such a good idea because I feel like there's always this thing where it's like, you know, as long as you have the right makeup brush, as long as you spend, if you really spend your money on makeup brushes, then it's your, no matter what makeup you have, it's gonna be good, it's gonna look good. I thought about that, like that kind of made sense to me for a while, but girl, I don't think so. I have a lot of cheap makeup brushes that are amazing. Like, I don't think you need expensive, fancy makeup brushes to do makeup well. I'm living proof. Don't say anything. Don't. I think I look great and I have never spent $80 on a makeup brush. Anyway, let us jump into this anti-haul of makeup brushes. First up is this. This is a makeup brush by La Mer. It's called The Powder Brush. When a company puts an article, an unnecessary article in front of the name of their product, um, you know, you know it's, there's gonna be it's gonna be full of shit. If you've been fortunate enough to never have heard of the brand La Mer, let me break it down for you. Crazy, crazy expensive luxury skincare brand. I've, tr I've sampled their products. Someone sent me some samples from them. That was fascinating to try it, thank you. If you watch me talk about skincare in my, my 12th anti-haul video, you hear like kind of how I feel about it generally, but this is one of those things where it's like an $80 makeup brush, we know it's too expensive. We know we shouldn't buy it. We even hear people that use the brush on like their channels say you shouldn't buy this. Yet we feel this drive to buy it because we see how flawless their makeup looks. We see how amazing and beautiful and how amazing and how much we love them. We like, just want to be like them. We just want to do what they do. We want to like, and that's how I learned doing makeup. I watched people do makeup and then I just did what they did. I think if they're, if you're constantly showing a product that you know is something that you shouldn't be promoting, like, I know you like using it because it's fancy and luxurious, but no, use it on your own. Don't show it on your channel too much, no. Bottom line is with this brush, it's $80, it's too expensive. I'm sure it's beautiful and fluffy and fabulous. Can you find a cheaper version of this? Yes. Would I suggest maybe even trying the IT Cosmetic brush, which is pretty expensive, but not nearly as expensive as this. I think it's at Ulta. I felt them. You could actually feel them. They're super soft. It's insane. I, just this is the La Mer thing. The whole brand is just so fancy, overhyped. I was in a Duty Free recently, and I walked in, and in the Duty Free, a woman at the La Mer counter, in the, it was like a little tiny box. She, I walked up to her, and she said, Welcome to La Mer. And I was like, I thought I was in Minneapolis. Like, is this... Oh, I'm in La Mer now? I'm, I'm in La Mer. I thought I was... I didn't realize that's where I was. The pretension level of this brand, the luxury, it's just too much. Don't spend $80 on a powder brush. I don't need it, I'm not gonna buy it. And I just implore other people that have YouTube channels out there that if you get sent PR that is like crazy fancy and stuff that you would never buy yourself or use, I don't know, maybe think twice about using it so much on your channel because it's this isn't really just like, I'm not just doing makeup for me anymore. I'm doing it for my entire audience and I have to be responsible for how they view the way that I use those products. Anyway, got real preachy about a freaking $80 makeup brush. Didn't mean to, but it did. I'm Kimberly Clark. All right, moving on. Okay, next we've got these. I'm a nerd. I'm such a nerd. I'm I'm a uber uber nerd. I love sci-fi. I love magic. I I I play Dungeons and Dragons. Like girl, like I get it. I get the nerdness. I get it. I don't get these. It's the Storybook Cosmetics Wizard Wand brushes. It's from Storybook Cosmetics, which they started with these brushes. This is like their first and only product. They've since expanded to have like a makeup palette and stuff. They're an indie makeup brand. The actual brushes, like there's nothing about these brushes that are amazing or unique. Everyone that buys them will tell you that. No one's like, 
I just gotta, I mean, yes, the handles are all different weird occult images, but that shader brush, girl, girl. Like, no, the shade, whatever. The brushes are kind of meh. I don't, first of all, I don't even understand what mythology this is trying to like capture. We got like a weird kind of like cobra snake thing. We've got like a, a, a little like golden coin and a thing, a braid wrapped around. We've got some like wood. If this had like a more, if they could explain to me what all these wands meant and there was like some narrative or something, I could maybe understand this, but they literally were just like, let's Google image search wizard wand and then we'll just like copy the things that come up. There's not that much actual amazing creativity put in this, which is why I love sci-fi. Like, I love fantasy and sci-fi because of the high level of creativity generally that is applied to mundane situations or stories or something, right? I feel like this was like minimal. Like, I don't think this is real. I think this is like just taking advantage of people that are kind of interested in that genre. I don't think that this design lives up to the genre of fantasy. I'll say it. I'll say it. I will. I think this should have been better. If you're really gonna do a wizard wand brush oh my god like make it big make it like the length of a wizard wouldn't that be amazing if you had like a makeup brush that was like whoosh, whoosh. when your makeup brush is this big like it's a wizard it's a wizard wand poof that's not a wizard wand you need some girth you need some alkalazams I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Potter fans. I don't know. I don't know the I don't know the thing I don't know the word with the rumalama Petrovas Sarias of, um, I don't, I'm sorry, Mungle, Muggles? Are there, what are in there? What are the bad, Slytherins, Slytherin? I'm sorry, I, I, I'm sorry. I, if, if I've offended you as a Harry Potter fan, I apologize. I still don't think you should buy these. I think they're, I feel like we could have done better with this. I'm interested to see how this brand expands because now they're doing eyeshadow palettes and stuff that I feel like they're gonna try to stick with this theme. Let's see if they could like make it a little more interesting. I think some people may have considered this a strong first product. I do not. I don't think it's fantastical and amazing enough for it to be something that I should add to my nerdy collection. Nope, I don't need it. I'm not gonna buy it. I'm sorry, wizardry. Hail to the guardians of the watchtowers of the West. I'm sorry, sorry about cosmetics, but I, I bind you. I bind you from doing harm. Harm against others and harm against yourself. I, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. I don't need you and I'm not gonna buy you. Bye. Bye. So then we've got these. So these are uh, these are some brush sets from Wayne Goss. These are sold on Beautylish.com, uh, which is a, a makeup retailer that kind of does like a lot of high-end brands. They sell Natasha Denona. Apparently they're shipping and packaging and everything and their selection's really good. I've never ordered from them, so I can't vouch for any of that. These are available. There's three different sets. There's the collection, which is $210. There's the face set, which is $250, which is most appealing to me. I mean, I'm a sucker for face brushes. These look amazing. Then there's the anniversary set for $200. $125. So these brushes look amazing. They're all Japanese made. They're all natural bristles and they claim to be cruelty free. Here's the deal. I can't justify spending this much money on a set of makeup brushes, period, even if they were like amazingly made. I don't own any Hakuhodo. I don't own any Chikohodo. I just can't afford those. I just know I can't. And if you can't afford them, then you can't afford them and then you shouldn't buy them. Bottom line, right? Furthermore, I think a brush set on its own, unless it's like really affordable, I think isn't really worth it. Like I bought a vegan brush set from Morphe on Hot Look for like 10 bucks years ago, and it's been amazing, I love it. Do I use every single brush in it? No, but it's fine because I spent so little money on it. When I spend $250 on a brush set, I better use every single freaking brush. But just looking at these, I know there's gonna be brushes that I'm not gonna use. So know yourself, know your makeup habits, really take a good look at these brushes and see would you use all of them? If the answer is no, if the answer is like I wouldn't even use most of them, then don't buy this set, don't. If you really want to try these brushes, why not buy an individual brush? Because they're also sold separately on Beautylish. However, I don't think I recommend doing that either because the other reason why I'm not going to buy any of these Wayne Goss brushes is because they are natural bristle brushes, yet they claim to be cruelty-free. If you've watched my channel for a while, you know that I'm not exclusively cruelty-free. I have a lot of nuanced opinions about cruelty-free makeup. I have many videos where I talk about MAC and Estee Lauder. I have like a whole saga with them that I've been dealing with. I am not fully on the cruelty-free bandwagon for a lot of reasons. And one of those reasons is that I feel like the words cruelty-free are a little overused and sometimes could like represent, you know, greenwashing where people like say that they're environmentally friendly or something without really having any proof to back it up. I've been hearing a lot of things recently that like, yes, a cruelty-free makeup exists where it means like you don't test on animals and stuff like that, but it's really hard to like have cruelty-free makeup that's also not vegan. 
Like, these aren't vegan. Like, they're made from animal hair, natural bristles. So it mean, if they're cruelty-free, I guess it means that they don't test on animals, but they somehow got the hair off the animals. And until I see Wayne Goss combing a blue squirrel himself and giving it a little treat, I'm not gonna believe that these are cruelty-free. And what's more, the Beautylish website has like a whole manufacturing process photo series where you could see like, how are these brushes made? The manufacturing process, however, starts once the hair is, it's, you don't see any pictures of the squirrels or the minks or whatever the bristles are from, that you just see them already harvested. So I, I respect that they're trying to like show you more of the manufacturing process and how they're made and that they're handmade and they're touched by 20 artisans in Japan, but who touched the squirrel that removed the hair from it? Like I, that, that process seems to be conspicuously left out of the little photo essay on the Beautylish website. And I don't think it's for no reason, right? I think it's a little suspicious that they've been very open. They're saying it's cruelty-free, it's natural bristles, but it's cruelty-free. Let's show you all the parts of the process. Yet they don't show you where, how the hair is actually extracted. I, prove me wrong, Beautylish, Wayne, prove me wrong. Go ahead, show me how your natural hair bristles are harvested and maybe I will change my tune about this. Educate me, teach me. I, I'm the first to admit ignorance. I love learning. If you know how something can be natural bristles and cruelty free, tell me about it down below. But until then, I don't need it, I'm not gonna buy it. I'm not gonna spend upwards of $200 on a brush set that A, I'm not gonna use all the brushes of, B, are cruelty free, but natural and is confusing uh, and are just so damn expensive. I just can't, I'm sorry, I don't need it, I'm not gonna buy it. Sorry, Wayne, goss darn it, I'm not gonna buy it. That was bad, that was a bad one. I can't say goss darn it, that's... Oh my goss. These final two items kind of like weave into each other, okay? First is this. These are, uh, they're makeup brushes with unicorn horns as the handles. I'm not gonna lie and say aesthetically this is something that I think is cute and would want. I'm not gonna like go out of my way to buy something just because it has a unicorn horn and just so you can do the thing where you hold, hold the brush to your head and it's a unicorn horn. I mean, I think I'm already doing it with this. Look, this is a Delium Tools brush. Already looks like a unicorn, kinda, like a platypus. Is it worth it to like specifically seek out a, a brush with a unicorn handle just so I could be like cute like that? I know, no, 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 it's not. Furthermore, so these are the these are the original. I think, uh, as far as I can tell, these are like kind of the original unicorn handle brushes. These are from Unicorn Lashes UK. It's a UK company. This set uh, retails for forty five pounds, which is about sixty bucks, and it comes with this carrying case, which is like shaped like a diamond. Total cute overload, cutesiness, cutesy whatever. And honestly, this is more affordable than the Wayne Goss set. It's sixty bucks versus 250 bucks, like I could maybe justify buying this a little more if it weren't so obvious that it was just for the cute factor. Because again, same things apply. Would I use all the brushes in the set? No. Do I think that it's worth it for me to buy a whole set of brushes that I won't get a lot of use out of? I don't think so. The carrying case thing also, like, would I want a diamond shaped brush roll or some really cute brush roll for me to carry like all my makeup brushes in? Yeah, that would be amazing. I'd love a big, awesome, cute way to transport my makeup brushes. This can only fit the brushes in the set. It's made for the set. If I travel with this, I'm gonna bring other brushes. Am I gonna shove them in? Are they gonna match? How am I even gonna aesthetically justify putting non-unicorn handle brushes in this freaking diamond bag? What? No! I don't need these and I'm not gonna buy them, right? Uh-uh. Pass. Sorry. Sorry, unicornlashes.co.uk.org. No, I'm sorry. I don't need them. I also don't need this. Um, doesn't this look a lot like what we just saw? This is from Tarte. And guess what? It came out after what we just saw. This is the Tarte Believe in Yourself Magic Wands brush set for $39. This doesn't come with a diamond case, so I guess maybe that's part of the price difference. But like, how shady is that for Tarte to copy another company? Tarte is not like a small makeup brand. They're like a huge makeup brand. Like they, they could have other ideas. They could do different makeup brushes. They literally were just like, this is trending right now. Let's just make another, let's make our own version of it. And it's so obvious that they were just copying this hyped up trend because they named this the stupidest thing. They're called the Magic Wand Brush Set, but they're unicorn horns. I guess they were like, all right, people love the Magic Wands from the Storybook Cosmetics. They also love the unicorn handles from Unicorn Lashes. 
Let's make the brushes look exactly like the unicorn handles from Unicorn Lashes, and then we'll call them magic wands, like the storybook cosmetic wands. We'll take advantage of two independent makeup brands at the same time. Yay! Then, to add insult to injury, they also call it the Believe in Yourself magic wands brush set. Believe in yourself as I believe in unicorn makeup brushes. Lena Horn is rolling over in her, is she dead? No, she's still alive. I think she's still alive. Lena Horn's upset. Lena Horn's upset. Listen, Uzo Aduba, I think you're great, but I, I believe in myself. So does Lena Horn. She wants you to believe in yourself as she believes in you. I, I think you should believe in yourself as I believe in you. And I believe in your ability to resist purchasing these stupid makeup brushes from Tarte. No, I'm sorry. Don't need it. I'm not going to buy it. Sorry, Tarte. You've got to be seen in green, but I wouldn't be caught dead seen holding these. No, that was my 13th anti-haul. I hope you enjoyed this double anti-haul video day. Um, don't get used to it. I'm really trying to make these a once a month situation. Sometimes I could do them more than that. Sometimes I can't even get my shit together to even do that. I know everyone just wants them, loves them, needs them. Yes, girl, yes, I know. But for now, you gotta bear with me while I'm getting my life, my schedule, all my things sorted out. But I'm here for you, and every once in a while you get a little special gift from me, and that's two anti-hells in one day. And what can I say? It's all for you. If you really want me, it's all for you. Two and a half in one day, it's all for you. It's all for you, and it won't mind my hold. Check out my other videos, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, uh, check out my Listen Up series, my What Happens to Your Face series, all the series, all the things. On my homepage, I've got all my videos organized in playlists, easy, really easy to sort through and check it out. Go check it out, go check it out, and give me a subscribe and give this video a thumbs up while you're at it. Yeah, yeah! And I hope you can resist buying some of these freaking makeup brushes, ugh, as I do. Because believe in yourself as I Believe in you. I'm Kimberly Clark. Bye.